Welcome back friends to Cosmic Ways. Today you will be learning about classification of the galaxies. But first let's understand what is a galaxy. A galaxy is a gravitationally bound system of stars, stellar remnants, interstellar gas, dust, and dark matter. The word galaxy is derived from the Greek galaxias, literally, milky, a reference to the Milky Way. Our Earth is also located in one of the spiral arms of the Milky Way which lies about two-thirds of the way out from the center of the galaxy. Galaxies are categorized into three major types based upon their visual appearance given by Edwin Hubble. These types are, spiral galaxy, elliptical galaxy and irregular galaxy. The first galaxies were identified in the 17th century by the French astronomer Charles Messier, although at the time he did not know what they were. Messier, who was a keen observer of comets, spotted a number of other fuzzy objects in the sky which he knew were not comets. Worried that other comet hunters might be similarly confused, he compiled a list to prevent their misidentification. Messier's list, where objects are identified by M for Messier, followed by a number, for example M51 contained information on 110 star clusters and spiral nebulae, galaxies, but it was almost 300 years before astronomers figured out what the fuzzy, spiral nebulae, actually were. Some people argued that these nebulae were, island universes, that is objects like our Milky Way galaxy, but external to it. The argument went on until the 1920s, when the American astronomer Edwin Hubble finally measured the distance to one of these spiral nebulae. In 1923 Hubble was studying the Andromeda, nebula, now called the Andromeda Galaxy, when he realized that one of the objects he was observing was in fact a Cepheid variable star. Cepheids are stars whose brightness changes periodically over time, and they had been discovered by the American astronomer, Henrietta Leavitt, in the early 1900s. Leavitt found what is now known as the period-luminosity-PL relationship, a link between the luminosity of a Cepheid and its period. Hubble used the PL relation to find the distance to the Cepheid he was studying in M31, and proved that it was located outside of our own galaxy. This finally ended the debate on the nature of the spiral nebulae, that is they were indeed distant galaxies like our Milky Way. Coming back to the types of galaxies, let's see the first type, the spiral galaxies. These galaxies appear as flat, blue-white disks of stars, gas and dust with yellowish bulges in their centers. These galaxies are further divided into two groups, normal spirals and barred spirals. In barred spirals, the bar of stars runs through the central bulge. The arms of barred spirals usually start at the end of the bar instead of from the bulge. Spirals are actively forming stars and comprise a large fraction of all the galaxies in the local universe. Hubble classified spiral and barred spiral galaxies further according to the size of their central bulge and the texture of their arms. Spiral galaxies are classified as SA, SBA, SB, SBB or SC, SBC, classic barred, according to the tightness of their spiral, the clumpiness of their spiral arms, and the size of their central bulge. These differences can be traced back to the relative amounts of gas and dust contained within the galaxies. Now let's see the second type of galaxies the elliptical galaxies. Ellipticals, which account for about one-third of all galaxies, vary from nearly circular to very elongated. They possess comparatively little gas and dust, and also contain older stars and are not actively forming stars anymore. The largest and rarest of these, called giant ellipticals, are about 300,000 light years across. Astronomers theorize that these are formed by the mergers of smaller galaxies. In 1926, Edwin Hubble devised a system to classify galaxies known as the Hubble Sequence. Under this organization, elliptical galaxies are classified by how stretched out they are. Galaxies classified as E0 appear to be almost perfect circles remember, a circle is an ellipse while those listed as E7 seem much longer than they are wide. A galaxy's appearance is related to how it lies on the sky when viewed from Earth. A galaxy having the E7 shape but seen head-on would appear as an E0, for instance, because observers would not see its stretched shape, which lies behind it. And here comes the third type of galaxy, the irregular galaxy. An irregular galaxy is the catch-all name given to any galaxy that does not neatly fit into one of the categories of the Hubble classification scheme. They have no defined shape nor structure and may have formed from collisions, close encounters with other galaxies or violent internal activity. Irregular galaxies, which have very little dust, are neither disk-like nor elliptical. Astronomers often see irregular galaxies as they peer deeply into the universe, which is equivalent to looking back in time. These galaxies are abundant in the early universe, before spirals and ellipticals developed. 
Aside from these three classic categories, astronomers have also identified many unusually shaped galaxies that seem to be in a transitory phase of galactic development. But due to the diversity of objects that fall into this category it is difficult to constrain sizes, masses, and luminosities. The best known examples of irregular galaxies are the small and large Magellanic clouds. These are companion galaxies to our own Milky Way, and can be easily seen at dark sites in the southern hemisphere. So this was all about the classification of galaxies. The detailed information on each type will be provided in the later videos. Till then stay safe and enjoy astronomy. And yes, don't forget to do stargazing whenever you get free time. Wishing you all clear skies. For more updates on astronomy and astrophotography and other science related topics subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon too. Thank you for watching.